worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. And you're worthy of all the praise. We just love you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, that name that's above every other name. Jesus, we just worship you. Can you give Jesus a big praise offering right where you're at? I'm so excited to preach today. You can be seated. I'm so excited to preach to you today because God is doing some amazing things. And I just want to uh, recognize all the online viewers. And we just want to tell you we love you and we care about you. And as today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, we are celebrating the birthday of the local church. Can I get a loud amen? Can, can we wish every local church happy birthday today? Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. I'm so excited to preach today, and I'm going to preach a word that, that is burning on the inside. We've been in a series called Repair of the Breach. Say it with me. Say Repair of the Breach. Isaiah 58 verse 12 says this, Those from among you shall rebuild, shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations, and you shall be called repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. I have been so excited. We've, we've started this series. We built a bridge. Come on. And we learned how to protect the bridge. And today I'm talking about that there comes the times that we have to leave the bridge. And I want you to hear what I'm saying. I have a title to my message. I'm calling it, It Is Time to Raise Hell. You ain't hearing me. It's time to raise hell. Acts 2 verses 1 through 4 says this. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with, with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I love this. They were all together in one accord. And in Isaiah 58 verse 12, it says, those from among you. Let me talk. I need to talk to some people that are from our tribe. Come on, somebody. I need to talk to the tribe today. I need to talk to some people that are from us. Come on, somebody. I need to talk to some people that are in unity with what God's doing on planet Earth. I need to talk to some people that are on mission, even in the middle of quarantine. You still got mission focus in the middle of a pandemic. I need to talk to some people that are willing to raise hell here on this earth. Can I get a loud amen? Come on, you ain't hearing me. Can I get an amen? There are times when we have to rebuild the bridge. There's times where we have to protect the bridge. And then there's times where we have to go into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. I'm talking about staying on mission. See, the Holy Spirit, we are celebrating the empowerment of the Holy Spirit today. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to do the work of the ministry. Who am I talking to? The Holy Spirit puts a fire so shut up in our bones that we just got to tell everyone about Jesus. We got to tell everyone what Jesus does. See, the Holy Spirit, you don't want to go to the ends of the earth without the Holy Spirit. You don't want to go in your neighborhood without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Can I get a loud amen? See, we, are, we need to go into the highways and byways, into the street corners, in the alleyways, and compel people to come in, compel people to come to this bridge. Come on, somebody. We're not meant to just stay here alone. We have to go out. Who am I talking to? Am I talking to anyone that still remembers what it means to be mission-minded? Am I talking to anyone that still remembers that we still have a great commission? I, I don't know if you took a sabbatical in the middle of the quarantine, but I'm telling you, this church hasn't. We've served over 20,000 people with food and supplies in the middle of a pandemic. We've seen over 2,000 people give their heart to Jesus Christ and see a change in their life. Can I get a loud amen? 
we've been having outdoor services on I've been preaching and the worship team been on top of a roof proclaiming the goodness of God in the land of the living who am I talking to that's still on mission today still on purpose today still on track to do the things of God today can I get a loud amen you ain't hearing me I'm ready to preach because I, I think we have to realize that we have to we still have a purpose and we still have a mission and this is what the Holy Spirit was about this was the birth of the church when they were in one accord they were united come on somebody and they were in a prayer meeting can I get a loud amen I, I say this all the time we need to get back to the power of prayer we need to get back to the mission of prayer. We need to get back to focused on the things of God. And we got to get back on the streets and back in the alleyways. And, and as things are opening up now, we have to get even more on point. Can I get a loud amen? I'm going to read 1 John 3, 8. And it says this. This is my main text for the day. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, say for this purpose, say with that too, say for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I have a message that I just can't get out of my spirit. I am calling it, it's time to raise hell. I'm going to say it again. It's time to raise hell. This is the time. This is the season. If there is a time for the church to be the church, this is it. If there's a time for Christians to be Christians, this is it. See, I'm here to tell you, you were fearfully and wonderfully created. You were born for a purpose. You weren't born to sit on your couch and watch Netflix all day. You were called with a purpose from God. The Bible says he knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I'm here to tell you, there was destiny on you in the womb. God prepared something for you in the womb. God has greatness smeared and smothered all over you from the womb. I need to talk to some people that say they are born with a purpose. And that realize the season. See, we don't preach this anymore. But I'm here to tell you that one day... The eastern sky will crack open and Jesus will come back. And someone's going to be working in the field with another person. And one goes and one stays. See, I'm here to tell you, there's going to come a time when Jesus come back and raptures his church. Can I get a loud amen? And we have to get as many people mm, across this bridge as humanly possible. That's why sometimes we need to build it. And sometimes we need to protect it. And sometimes we need to leave it. Can I get a loud amen? We have to go into the alleyways, the street corners, the highways and byways. Because our Jesus has prepared a banquet table. Mm. Can I get an amen? I want to talk to you about the word raise. The definition of it. But let me, let me just lay a foundation. You will hear in churches, and I've preached this over and over, that we are called to uplift. We are called to build. I've preached that. That is part of the Holy Spirit empowering us. We're called to encourage. We're called to uplift. Say uplift. We're called to build. But people don't preach this. We're also called to destroy, to demolish, to tear down. We're also called to completely annihilate. See, we don't talk like this anymore. See, everybody wants a self-help gospel. Help me get to where I need to go. Help me become a better person. Help me become a better parent. Help me become a better husband. All that's good. I ain't knocking it, but that's not the gospel. Come on, somebody. We are not a self-help gospel. There's times to build. There's times to uplift, but there's also times to destroy. There's times to kick down. There's times to annihilate. So I need to talk to some wrecking balls today. 
I need to talk to some wrecking balls for Jesus that are ready to destroy a few things. See, I'm not talking about it's time to raise R A I S E. I'm talking about R A Z E. It's time to raise hell. It's the time. See, when you leave the bridge and you go into the highways and byways, you're going to encounter a few things. You're going to encounter the works of hell, the works of the devil. I I'm here to tell you we're not meant to destroy hell. We're meant to destroy the works of hell. Can I get a loud amen? See, if someone, see, I am sick and tired of a powerless, wimpy, church that can't go into the street corners and alleyways and highways and byways and destroy the works of the devil we are meant to build up and uplift but there are times where we're meant to tear down destroy and annihilate i need to talk to some people that understand we are in a time that we need to learn to raise hell i'm sick of racism it needs to go it's demonic and it needs to go in the name of jesus we need to destroy racism on planet earth i'm sick and tired of people getting killed we need to destroy senseless murder it's time we raise hell it's time we become the church and learn to raise hell i'm tired of children being mistreated we need to destroy the works of the devil. I'm tired of children being molested, beat, and destroyed. That's not happening on our watch. Come on, somebody. It's time we raise hell. You are created for a purpose. And it's not just to build, but it's also to destroy. Tell your neighbor, say, it's time to raise hell. Tell your neighbor, it's time to raise hell. I'm tired of children being treated horrible. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of pedophiles. I'm sick of molesters. I'm sick of people stalking innocent children. That needs to stop in the name of Jesus. We are here to destroy the works of hell. I am tired of people killing babies before they're even born. I'm here to tell you we're here to destroy the works of hell. We're here to raise hell. Come on, somebody. See, the translation is very weak. You, you can sit down. It says this. Jesus, for the purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. It actually, when it's translated, it means like utterly destroyed. Completely destroyed. I, I, I think you need to see this. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of a lot of things. I'm tired of Christians not destroying the works of the devil and people getting sidetracked over and over about stupid things. I don't care how many Facebook likes you have. I don't care how many TikToks you do. I don't care how many views you get. Why don't you get out there in the highways and byways and compel people to come in? Can I get an amen? Why don't you destroy the works of hell? Can I get a loud amen? I need to talk to some people that are less concerned about their profile and more concerned about advancing the kingdom of God. I need to talk to some people less concerned about likes than, than, than destroying the works of the devil. Can I be real with you today? I'm sick and tired of women being treated like second class citizens in our society. I'm here to tell you women are called, women are appointed. I'm sick in 2020 that women don't have the same rights a man does. Come on, somebody. I'm sick of men messing with my spiritual daughters and treating them horribly and treating them like they don't belong, like they they don't have a call. I'm here to tell you, if you're a woman of God that has a call, I'm here to raise some hell on your behalf today. Can I get a loud amen? I'm sick of it. It's time we raise hell. It's time we take a stand. I, I, I'm, I'm so tired of the devil telling everyone the church doesn't matter. I'm so tired that we had to have call after call, 
conversation after conversation just to be able to open the church. I'm here to tell you, this is ridiculous. It is so ridiculous that I'm sick of it because the church is essential. Jesus is essential. Us assembling together is essential. I'm here to tell you, in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a global outbreak, the place that should be open is the church of Jesus Christ, the blood-bought, sanctified church of God. Come on. It's time we raise hell. It's time we destroy the works of the devil. I'm sick and tired of men cheating on their spouses and then coming to church every Sunday. I'm sick and tired of women cheating on their husbands and, 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 and just jumping in the prayer meeting like nothing's happening. Where is the conviction of the Holy Spirit? I need to challenge you today. We, this God is telling the church, it's not time to shrink back. It's time to rise up. And while in the process of us rising up, we need to kick some things down. We need to destroy some things. We need to learn to raise hell. It is time that we start to raise hell here on planet Earth. I'm tired of people being homeless. I'm tired of people not having a place to live. I'm tired of people not being able to have food in their belly. I'm tired of this world. You know, I was talking to some people in El Salvador. They are on, they are on what they call, uh, they are on, um, they have to stay at home and they can only leave four times a month. They are on complete lockdown. It, it is, they are in martial law, it's called. So the government has taken over, and you can lead four times a month, one time a week. Uh, our friend that I ministered at her church, two of her congregants left when they shouldn't have left just to get out. They were shot and killed. That's not right. That's not right. They are opening up gyms. They are opening up auditoriums. They're opening up different places, and they created in El Salvador and containment camps. If you leave too many times, they will throw you in a containment camp. I'm here to tell you, that's not right. Someone needs to stand up and say, what's going on in El Salvador is wrong. We, we can't be silent anymore. We have to stand up and say, what's happening is wrong. We have to stand up. What happened in Minnesota this week was wrong. It is demonic what is occurring on our planet that's why i've been preaching this so hard that's why i've been trying to encourage your faith in this way because i i don't want to just build you up without you understanding that there's times you need to kick a door down i don't want to just lift you up when you don't understand there's times to annihilate i don't want to constantly just patty cake you when there's times that you got to put on the forearmor of god and get ready to go to war see i'm tired tired of the church treating the congregants like they're little kids it's time that you rise up it's time that you become a man or woman of god and learn how to raise some hell and kick down some things and destroy the works of the devil i'm here to tell you hatred is the work of the devil racism is the work of the devil I'm here to tell you, hurting kids is the work of the devil. I'm here to tell you, hurting people is the work of the devil. Trying to silence the church, the message of Jesus Christ, is the work of the devil. I'm here to tell you, if you can't see it, you're missing it. I was sent here on planet Earth for this time, such a time as this. And this church was sent here for such a time as this, to raise hell. I am taking back everything the enemy's stolen. I'm taking back what he stole from you and from your bloodline and from your family. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of him taking from us. I'm tired of him stealing our message. I'm preaching this with passion because the church needs to get itself together and be the church. This is Pentecost Sunday. This is fire Sunday. This is when we become the church. We are the church. We don't let this stuff happen. We don't let this stuff occur on our watch. We don't let this injustice occur. We don't let this, we don't let this evil rise up and take over. I'm telling you, what's happening in El Salvador needs to change. 
needs to change. All over the world, there's stories like this. These things need to change. It was a democracy, and now it has literally become a dictatorship because of a global pandemic. I'm here to tell you, that's not right. That's not right in the name of Jesus, and we need to stand with the people in El Salvador. And we need to stand with them in Jesus' name. I'm here to tell you, there are times when we have to leave the bridge. There's times when we have to say, you know what? We protected the bridge. We built the bridge. But now we got to get some people, and we got to bring them to this bridge. See, see, it's not just all about staying in the four walls. We know that now. It's not all just about getting our goosebumps and glory stories at church. It's not just us having our Holy Spirit encounters at church. It's time for us to leave the bridge and go into the highways and go into the byways, go into the shelters, go into the homeless communities, go into neighborhoods that are affluent and wealthy and tell them about the name of Jesus Christ. See, this name's above every other name. It's the only name that men shall be saved. I'm here to tell you, we have a message of hope and our world needs it more now than ever. And can I get an amen as we proclaim the wonderful matchless name of Jesus. We need to kick the devil's teeth in. We need to learn how to destroy the works of the devil. I'm sick of abuse. I'm sick of neglect. I'm sick of men abusing women in the name of the Lord. That's not happening on our watch. I'm sick. I'm sick and tired of the church being completely and utterly silent by the government and by everyone else. I'm tired of it. We are not a silent entity. We are the loudest voice out there. We should be. We should be. And the devil wants to steal our voice. But I'm here to tell you, alone we are a voice, but together we are a force. And I'm here to tell you, we need to learn to get together. There's a blessing when God's people are united. The Bible says God actually commands a blessing on unity. And so I'm asking all the people that are part of this church that we need to unite in the mission of Jesus Christ. We need to unite in the mission of Jesus Christ. I'm not anti-government. I'm not, but I am this. I am for our message. So much it burns in me. I am for the church. I am for Jesus. And anything that stands in the way of Jesus, I'm going to shout about it. I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be silent about it. Anything that tries to hurt our message, anything that tries to stop us preaching this wonderful gospel message, anybody that tries to hurt our bridge, that might not be pretty to you, but it's my bridge. It's your bridge. And I'm here to tell you, when we leave this bridge, to go get people and bring them back. I need you to understand something. You were born for this. God created you for a purpose. There's something great inside you. You're not second, you're not a second thought. You're not an afterthought. God had plans when he designed you. When God fearfully and wonderfully made you, he knew what he was doing. See, I'm here to tell you, God doesn't make junk. God knows what he's doing. God God knew your destiny before you knew your destiny. God knew your purpose before you knew your purpose. I'm here to tell you, part of your purpose is to raise hell. It's to destroy the works of the enemy, to cast out demons, to see people set free by the gospel of Jesus Christ, to see the miraculous and the supernatural. I'm telling you, this summer we're going to have healing crusades here at the church, and we're going to bring in the sick and see them healed. We're going to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. We're going to see people saved in record numbers greater than ever before because we are called. It is our time to raise hell. 
we're going to fight for families. We're going to believe in the power of marriage. We're going to believe in the family. Come on, somebody. We're going to believe in children. We're going to give them the gospel message and tell them that God has a purpose for them. We're going to believe in the next generation. We're going to say, God's called you to preach the gospel all over the world. It's time we stop playing patty cake in church. We stop playing the games. I don't care what the color of the carpet is. I don't care if we have a pew or a chair. I don't care. It's time to raise hell here on planet Earth and take back what the devil stole. I came to destroy the works of the devil. We need to, we need to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm more convinced now that more evil is happening than we ever know. And we are called as the church. We are called. See, Matthew eleven twelve 12 says this. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Early on in my ministry, I wanted everyone to like me. I wanted to be liked. I wanted the mayor to give me the key to the city. I wanted them to have little parades for me for all the good things I was doing. The older I get, I don't care. I didn't come for a key to the city from a mayor that would be elected a couple years later and or not be elected a couple years later. See, I had to realize something. It's not a mayor that gives you a key to the city. It's God that gives you a key to the city. And I'm here to tell you, I want to please God, not man. I want to do what God wants, not man. I need to talk to some remnant today. I need to talk to some people that are from me. Come on, somebody. I need to talk to some people that understand what it's like that Isaiah 58, 12 word, those from among you. I need to talk to some those from among us, folks. Come on, somebody that realize that you're called by God, that you belong to a royal priesthood, that you're an heir to the kingdom of heaven. I need to talk to some people that are from among us. Come on, somebody. I need to talk to some repairs of the breach. I need to talk to some restorers of streets to dwell in. I need to talk to some people that are born to raise hell and realize this is the time. I need to talk to some people that aren't looking for a key from the mayor, but they want a key from God. I need to tell you, I look at the Bible and Paul, when he went into the city, he didn't get no key from the mayor. They wanted to kick him out of every city because he was destroying the works of the devil everywhere he went. He was raising hell and they wanted him out in the name of Jesus. See, why don't the city start getting mad at us? Because all we do is preach the gospel. All we do is spend time on the street corners and alleyways. All we're doing is seeing people saved, healed, and delivered. Come on, somebody. Wouldn't it be great if we empty out the hospital and there's no work for doctors or nurses? That would be one of the greatest things on planet Earth. Can I get a loud amen? I'm here to tell you, we need to learn. It's time to raise hell. It's time to raise hell. But see, what's happened is we have a lot of John Marks. You know, when Paul went on his trip, he took John Mark. And John Mark about... Halfway through the trip, took off. I can just picture him crying, snot coming out of his nose, tears coming down his eyes. Paul, it's too hard. I got to go. I got to go. And I feel like this is what we've done as the church. We've raised up a lot of John Marks. That when things get tough, snot comes out of their nose. They start crying, and they want to run back to the past. I need to talk to some people here. Don't run back to the past. Don't run back to the past. 
run towards Jesus. Run towards Jesus. Run towards the mission and vision and purpose he has. We got too many people wanting to run backwards. It was a lot better yesterday. It wasn't so tough yesterday. It wasn't so bad. The old life, the old life is gone. You need to realize that you are a new creation in Christ. All of them old things have passed away and all things have become new. Don't be like John Mark. Don't be a wimpy, wussy Christian when things get tough. Learn to get a spine, a spiritual spine, and say, this is my time that I need to learn to strengthen myself in the Lord. I need to get some spiritual resolve. I need to get some tough skin. I need to learn it's time to raise hell in the name of Jesus. This is my message today on Pentecost Sunday. This is why we have the Holy Spirit to empower us to do the work of the ministry to reach this hurting world to destroy the works of the devil I need to talk to some people this church I don't care what other churches are doing this church is going to be on mission and focus and on point like never before there's a world that needs Jesus and I know there's restrictions and stuff, and but when they lift, we're going to send teams to different places. We're going to get into the bridges, and we're going to get into the alleyways. You know, L.A. has such a huge homeless population. What are we doing about it? I don't want to just give them a loaf of bread or a sandwich or food. We need to pray that their lives will be completely changed, that God would deliver them, set them free. We need to pray for families. We need to pray for people that have been abused, people that have been neglected, people that have, have lost everything. We need to pray for marriages. We need to pray that our world turns to Jesus. I believe we're living in an unprecedented time. And we need this message. This message doesn't change. Methods can change from time to time, but the message never changes. And I'm telling you, we need the Holy Spirit. And we need to learn it's time to raise hell. It's time to stand up for what we believe in. It's time we stand up for the church. It's time that we stand up for Jesus. I, 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 I am tired of playing church. I don't want to play church anymore. I don't want to have meetings about carpets. I don't want to have meetings about what kind of chairs to get. I'm done. I'm not doing that. What I am going to do is I'm going to lead a church that's going to want the power of God. I'm going to need, I'm going to lead a remnant. I'm going to lead a people. I'm going to lead those from among us that want Jesus more than anything, that are willing to travel to the four corners of this world, preaching and proclaiming the gospel truth. I want to raise up a generation that knows how to raise hell and see the work of God accomplished. It's time. The time is now. If you're part of this church, grab hold of this vision. We are going to reach the world for Jesus. We're going to build our bridge. We're going to protect our bridge. But from time to time, we're going to leave our bridge. And we're going to bring people to our bridge. And we're going to do... Because what happens is you get around someone. And you have to destroy some things around them to get them to come where they need to come. And we are called to utterly destroy the works of hell. Can I get a loud amen? Right now, with every head bowed, every eye closed. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, you are not saved. You are not born again. You need right now, you need Jesus. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you're not saved and you need Jesus, right now, where you're at, I just curse every work of the devil that's around you. I break every curse of hell 
and I speak the life and the power of Jesus Christ. And I just declare God will do amazing and supernatural things in your life. If you need Jesus as your Savior, right now, say this with me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I want to serve you. I want you more than anything. I want you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I want you more than this world. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that decision, actually, if you made that statement today, if you say, I've left everything behind, I've given my life to Jesus. Because there is no greater thing you can ever do. I want you to reach out to us. We want to join you on this journey. Right now, I want everyone to lift their hands victoriously. Because as our world starts to open back up, what I want to do is I want to remind you of our mission today. I want to remind you of the Great Commission today. I want to remind you why we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. It's not just for goosebumps and glory stories. It's for a world that is hurting and dying that needs the power of Jesus Christ. We must compel them to come in, the Bible says. Go into the highways and byways. And so right now, I just declare mission, vision, purpose over your life. I declare you will get back to center. You will get back to the foundation. You will get back to your purpose. If you've never had a purpose, if you don't know your destiny, if you don't know what vision God has for you, I declare God will make it so real, that God will make it so tangible that you could lay hold of it, that you could grab it, that you could just grab it right out of the air and say, this is why I was created. And I declare it's time that we raise hell in the name of Jesus. Break down every demonic stronghold that's holding you back from fulfilling your purpose in Jesus. I bless your family and I bless you and the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay tuned. Service isn't over yet, but I want you to just don't tune off yet. Just stay tuned. We love you and we appreciate you. I want you to tell your neighbor, say, it's time to raise hell. Amen. What a powerful sermon series we've been on, Repairer of the Breach. You know, our pastor has been giving a word from God, and lives are being changed Lives are being transformed. Families are being blessed. Hallelujah. And we are ready to see what God is getting ready to do in this new season. You know, our church hasn't been asleep. Our church has been alive. It's a blessing to see the amazing things that God is doing here. You know, lives have been healed during this time. Lives have been transformed during this time. And when you would think that the church would be closed and asleep, not here at City Reach, we've been seeing testimony after testimony of the great and mighty things that God has been doing here at this church. So right now as we get ready to give, you can go to cr.city slash give, or you can mail in your tithes and offering. Uh, we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1 through 6. And this is what the word of God says. Then Elijah spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did according uh, to the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. It came to pass at the end of the seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for the land. 
Then the king talked with Jehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, uh, Tell me, please, all the great things Elijah has done. Now it happened as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, that there was a woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king for her house and for the land. And Jehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elijah restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed a certain uh, officer for her, saying, Restore all that was her and her proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. We are in a sermon series called Repair of the Breach, but we are also in a season of taking things back. And right now, I just want to tell you right there at home that God is getting ready to restore something in your life. I don't know if it's your business. I don't know if it's your job, but it is a time of restoration. We are getting ready to enter into a season of restoration. God is getting ready to restore what was taken from you. God is getting ready to restore what was lost. But today, we are about to enter into a season where we need to be obedient to God and we need to go back and take what the enemy stole from us. We need to go back to the place to where we lost what we lost and we need to claim it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you have lost today. I don't know what, what you've been uh, struggling today about, but God is saying to you, be faithful unto me. Be faithful with your tithes. Be faithful with your offerings during this season because the season that you're about to enter in, it is a season of restoration. I don't know about you, but I want my finances to be restored. I don't know about you, but I want to take back what the enemy stole from me. I want seven times of what the devil has taken from me. So today, as you get ready to give, as you get ready to give your tithes and your offerings, I want you right there to pray and believe God to restore seven times of what you lost. You see, many people today are struggling. Many people today in this season are going through a lot. Many have lost their businesses. Many people have lost their jobs. Many people have been going through depression, anxiety. Many people have been going through a lot of problems during this that through what this season has brought to them. But I am believing that this new season that we're about to enter in, it is called the season of restorations. We've been called to be repairs of the breach. You know, we've been called to raise hell. We've been called to do great and mighty things into this new season. And our God won't leave us or forsake us. Our God is going to supply according to his riches in glory. And I am believing that for you today. So let us pray. Let us pray that God multiplies. Let us pray that God restores. Let us pray that we take back seven times of what the enemy has stolen from us. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just pray for these tithes and these offerings. And we ask you, Lord, to restore to us everything, Father God, that has been taken from us. We believe we're about to enter into this new season of restoration. We believe that we're about to enter into a new season where we're going to take back what the enemy has taken from us. You have called us repairs of the breach, and we will go out there, Father, and do what you have called us to do. Continue to win more souls for you. Continue to uh, reach the kingdom for you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We ask you to bless these tithes and offerings in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Oh, my God.